In this video, we're going to look at naming, variables, classes, methods, and so on. Choosing good names will make your code easier to read, and therefore easier to debug and maintain. Let's start with variable names. Names of variables in PHP can be whatever you like, using letters, numbers, and underscores. So you could have variables like this. The problem with these variables, though, is that it's not obvious when you look at them what they contain. For example, a variable that contains a number that refers to the size of something should be called size. Or, if it's the count of a number of items in an array, then call it count, and so on. Likewise, for this variable, it contains a name, so let's call it that. A Boolean variable contains a value that refers to something being true or false, on or off, yes or no, and so on. So in addition to giving the variable a meaningful name, it's common practice to precede it with is or has. For example, if a variable is being used to see if a user has admin privileges, call it is admin. If the Boolean variable refers to a message that has an attachment, call it has attachment, and so on. The same for a variable that contains an object. Instead of calling it just object, it's common practice to name the variable after the class. So for example, if the variable contains an object of the product class, call it product. Likewise, for a variable that contains the return value of a function. What value is the function returning? For example, if it's a collection of task objects, call it tasks. If it's an individual task object, call it task, and so on. Don't be afraid of long variable names. They don't affect how fast your code runs, but a readable variable name will make your code much clearer. An exception for variable names is in a for loop, where it's common to use a variable like i as the iterator, as it's generally the only place the variable is used, within the same statement. Let's move on to functions. Function names, like variables, can contain numbers, letters, or underscores. Give a function a name that describes what it does not a generic name like my function. For example, if a function returns a single row from a database, call it get row. If it sets an email property, call it set email. Functions are usually named starting with a verb. So for example, create new customer or send activation email and so on. As for classes, these are named in the same way with letters numbers or underscores. A class is a blueprint for creating an object. So instead of a generic name like my class, a class should be named as a singular noun or a noun phrase. For example, a class that represents users should be called user. A class for page not found exceptions should be called page not found exception, and so on. As for standards, the PSR guidelines recommend classes should be named using studly caps, where the first letter of each word in the name is capitalised, and underscores aren't used. Likewise, methods should be named using camel case, which is the same, but the first letter is lower case. As for properties, no recommendation is given, so you can use studly caps, camel case, or underscores. The most important thing is to be consistent. The same goes for variable names. There is no recommendation for the style of capitalization to use, so you can use whichever you prefer. Again, the most important thing is to be consistent throughout your code. So by using meaningful variable, function and class names like this, you'll make your code much easier to understand, debug, and maintain.